everyone, welcome to Johnny's Nasdaq YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get a 14 gig RAM Mac OS VM from GitHub. Previously, I already showed you how to get a free and fast Windows RDP VPS from GitHub. We can use our Windows RDP terminal client to connect to it, and we will have admin access. If you have watched it, this video is going to be much simpler for you because we are using the same method. But if you haven't, that's still fine. I have a GitHub repository for you to see all script. And I have a blog post to show you step by step how to get to there. It is very straightforward process as long as you can follow what my video shows, you will get it without problem. So now, let's start it. There are two prerequisites for this lab. One is GitHub account, one is Angular account. I already explained in my last video. Here I'm going to explain it again. So for the GitHub account, because we're going to use it to launch a GitHub hosted runner. So this kind of runner can be Ubuntu Linux or Windows or Mac OS. So last video we did the Windows. So this video we're going to try Mac OS. Because the runner doesn't expose any port to internet. So that's why we use Anglog to expose the remote desktop port to internet. Anglog is going to map it to its own port. So we can connect to it, use the remote desktop client. So the script to run the workflow, it already shows here. It's very straightforward. Basically, it's just run Mac OS latest version. And then we get the analog OS token. And then to run it, run the start script. After that, you can log in. The script, start script is very simple as well. You're going to download the login script just to show you the username password. After that, we're going to create a user, run the admin with the password. After that, just start the VNC, enable VNC, and then run Anglog. Of course, install it first. So it's going to map in the port 5900 VNC port to the Anglog. Then once we have Anglog connect to our console, we get the port, then we're going to use VNC client to log in. So now let's get to the first step, creating our repository and start the runner. Assuming you already have Anglog account, and the GitHub account, so after you log in to the GitHub, create your new repository, give a name, make sure it's private then click create repository choose the actions then set up a workflow yourself click on here now you can go back to my github github dash vn repository from the mac folder find out the mac os.txt file just copy whole thing And paste to here. That's the only thing you need to do for this workflow. You don't need to change the name. I've let them commit changes. Commit changes. That first step. Create your workflow. Only thing you need to do is just copy paste. Second step is also simple, easy, which is to create your own secret for your Angular token. Go to your settings, security section, you will find the secrets and the variables. Click on actions, create new repository secret. Name it properly. You can find this name from the 
macOS.txt file. That's the name for your secret. The value you're going to find out from your Anglog account. That's why you need Anglog account for your prerequisite. Log in from the setup and the installation page. You will see this string, also token. Copy it and paste it to the new created secret as a value. Make sure the name is correct, the secret, and then add secret in. That's all step you need. So last step, we're going to test it. Go back to your actions. You should be able to see this Mac RDP workflow. Just run this workflow. You will see this Mac, Mac RDP workflow is running. Click on it, see the more details, step by step, it's running. So you can see there's a VNC server going to be created. And we're going to see that server going to come up and we're going to connect to it. So we will need one more thing. We will need a VNC client to connect to our server. From our VNC client, I will suggest to download real VNC viewer. It's a free real VNC client. And you can download it as a EKC file and then install in your computer. So we won't be able to go through that downloading and installing process since I already have it. So I have VNC viewer installed and I have previous installed session here for my testing. So to get it connected to, you need to find out your own connection address from Anglog. So let's go back to Anglog. Go back to your endpoint. So you will see a new record for your endpoint. Copy this URL. And go back to your VNC client page. You don't need to put TCP at the beginning. Just put the host name plus colon with port number. Now you can connect to it. It's connecting to there. It's an insecure connection. That's fine. We know it's so now it's asking the username password. So the username password you should be able to get it from my previous script. Either on login the SSH, you should be see from there. Or you can see it from the start of SSH, this file. Run the admin. And password. Now just wait this real VNC viewer connecting to remote. So one thing you will need to know, VNC protocol isn't that fast. It's a slow protocol. It's not like RDP protocol. So you will see lots of uh, delay latency when you move your mouse. And even a screen refreshing, you will see it's slow. But we will get there. So accessibility, not now. Yeah, we will set up later. Skip. Continue. Set up later. Continue. Finally. We got into 
this Mac OS VM desktop. So we use our VNC client connecting to this Mac OS desktop. So let's look at the configuration of this machine. About this Mac. So processor, 3.19 GHz, 14 GB memory, and we even get a serial number. It's a Mac Mini, late 2014 Mac Mini version, physical machine, Mac OS, Monterey version 12.7.3. There's no sound coming out, not like RDP. We will have sound for this one. The sound not forwarded to the local. Other than that, it's working well. You will get the full function Mac OS in the cloud. You can play with it. So one thing you have to keep in mind, the VM doesn't survive that long as we presented in the last video for RDP VM. It only survive around 15 minutes then this VM going to be deprovisioned. I think in the GitHub backend, they're going to detect some usage for this Mac OS VM. And then once the resources is exceeding certain level, then they will automatically deprovision this VM. But at least we get a way to use it for like 15 minutes to experience Mac OS. If you have something need to be tested for 10 to 15 minutes, that's a good place to go. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumb up if you like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. See you in my next episode.